In the last video, we talked about using the memory function for the flight plans. This is what we're going to look at in this video. We're going to discuss how to use the memory function, and then more specifically the cruise leg of the flight plan, how we can take advantage of the memory function, take advantage of efficient use of the calculator. So we'll first start by talking about how the memory function works. It's actually pretty simple. You notice you have four blue buttons. Now it might be a different color in your calculator, but you generally have four buttons that are associated with memory. You have MC, which is memory clear, MR, which is memory recall, M minus, which we don't use in the exam, but essentially what it does is it subtracts whatever numbers in the scratch pad up here off the number in the memory uh, recall section. And we have M plus, which is adding the number to the memory function or adding the number to a number that's already in the memory function. Again, we don't really use the, the plus side of it, adding numbers on, we just use it to save it in the memory. Now you also see a memory word up there. That just means there is a number in the memory. To clear that, we click MC. And if we want to recall it, we click MR, which is memory recall. So if I type in a number, say one, two, three, four, I can save it by hitting M plus. And you see the memory icon comes up. I can now clear the calculator, do whatever I want to it. I'm just typing in random numbers. And if I need that number again, I can just hit MR memory recall and there's that number. To clear it, I'll hit MC. So let's look at how we use this as part of a flight plan. We have the same flight plan here. We're gonna do the cruise leg. So we're gonna start by finding the estimated mid zone weight, which we calculated before as 68 ton. Number two in the cruise leg is to find the fuel flow. So in the last video, we found the fuel flow was 1,311 kilos per hour per engine. So we'll go 1311 times three times 1.03 because of the ISO deviation. So the fuel flow is 4,050.99 kilos. Instead of writing this down, we're gonna save it in the memory function by hitting M plus. I can now clear the calculator and do whatever I need to on the calculator. So next is to work out the ETI. Again, we'll do it on the calculator and we'll try not to round any numbers. So the distance of 993 divided by the ground speed of 409 gives us an ETI of 2.4278, et cetera, et cetera. Now, whenever I get an ETI on the calculator, I do what I call the, the rubber band. So I'll quickly convert it to minutes by times it by 60. I'll write that number down and then I'll immediately take it back to hours by dividing by 60. So right now I've got a really accurate ETI in hours on the scratch pad, and I have a really accurate fuel flow per hour in the memory function. So to find zone fuel, all I'm gonna be doing is multiplying the ETI by the fuel flow, which is in the memory recall. So there's our ETI, multiplied by memory recall. There's our zone fuel, 9,835.3 we'll call it. Next thing we need to do is work out the end zone weight. Now without taking the number off the calculator, I'm gonna subtract the start zone weight. 72925. Now I know this is gonna give me a negative number. It's not that big of a deal. The, the number's still the same, it just happens to be negative. If you really don't like it, you can click the plus minus button. So there's our end zone, which I'll write in. Now keeping this number in the calculator, I'm gonna add back on the start zone weight. 72925 divided by 2, and that's going to give me the actual mid zone weight, which is 68 ton, pretty much on the dot. That means the estimated mid zone checked out. I'll put a big tick next to that to say, yep, I checked the mid zone, and it's correct. And that's the cruise leg done. Notice how we didn't really have to type in any additional numbers on the calculator. We're not clearing the zone fuel, typing it back in. We're taking advantage of the zone fuels in the calculator to work out the end zone and then we add the start zone back on to work in the estimated mid zone. So this is gonna be the most efficient way and the most accurate way to do it. Accurate in terms of really accurate fuel flows that we don't have to round, multiplied by really accurate ETIs that we're not rounding either. So feel free to watch this video again if you wanna go through it again. Uh, maybe even use this, this procedure on some cruise examples you've already done before in the textbook. We'll try this on the next basic flight plan as well as the real flight plans. Pretty much any other flight plan we do for the rest of this course, we'll be following this procedure as far as we can.